Hello folks. While you're looking at the original case of the Erector set that I had when I was 8 years old, as you can see it's completely empty. It was absolutely the most influential toy I had as a kid and I built everything possible you could with it, plus some pretty unusual stuff. Back in the 1950s, my folks could never really afford the bigger kits, so this was the only one I had. Well, you know, thinking about it over the past 70 years, I've actually longed to have another set. I really wanted that blue electric motor. It looked like what I always thought a motor should look like. So I began searching and not only did I find a motor, I found the whole set. It was the one that the helicopter could be built with. Will I show you the kit as it arrived and I'm going to build the helicopter. I was told the helicopter was never built with this kit, which is really great. As I show you the kit and some of the assembly, I'm going to narrate some of the history thanks to Wikipedia. So here we go. As you can see, there are hundreds of steel parts used in the assembly, plus that blue motor. Well, basic erector parts included various metal beams with regularly spaced holes for assembly and using nuts and bolts. A frequently promoted feature was the ability to fabricate a strong but hollow lightweight structural girder from the long flat pieces of stamped sheet steel held together with nuts and bolts. Well, flat or curved pieces of sheet metal in various shapes and colors could be added to the construction. Hardened steel rods and steel clamps allowed the construction of hinges and transmission of mechanical power via rotating parts such as pulleys, gears, wheels, and levers. Well, unlike some earlier wooden construction sets, a rector could be used both for static structures and for dynamic structures incorporating mechanical linkages and other moving components. You know, modular standardized construction sets like Erector provided the ability to build a model and take it apart and build something else over and over again. Uh, both AC powered electric motors and battery powered DC motors became available, usually equipped with gears to increase their torque and effective mechanical power. Later the sets added miniature light bulbs and simple switches to control electrical power. Well, the Rector was first envisioned by Alfred Carlton Gilbert, that's A.C. Gilbert, in 1911 as he rode the train from New Haven to New York City. The section of track was being converted to electrical power and Gilbert watched as steel girders were erected to carry the power lines inspiring him to develop the toy. Well, Gilbert was a skilled magician actually and manufactured magic tricks and magic sets with his existing company, the Misto Manufacturing Company. Well, the first Erector set was made there in 1913 called the Erector slash Structural Steel and Electromechanical Builder and claimed to be educational, instructive, and amusing. The toy was first introduced and sold to the public in 1913 at the Toy Fair held in Broadway Central Hotel in New York City. Well, Erector quickly became the most popular construction toy in the United States, mostly because it was the only construction set at the time to contain a motor. Erector was commonly referred as an Erector set, though Erector set has become somewhat of a generic trademark denoting a variety of construction toys, irrespective of brand. In 1914, the name was changed to Misto Erector, the toy that resembles structural steel. In 1916, the company was reorganized and became the A.C. Gilbert Company. The product was renamed Gilbert Erector, the toy-like structural steel. In 1924, more changes occurred as the entire Erector system was completely overhauled to include over 70 types of parts. Erector was now called the new Erector, the world's greatest toys. Well, through 1932, Erector was sold in wooden boxes. But 1933 through 1962, the sets would all be sold in colorful boxes made of painted steel. Early boxes were colored red, green, and blue. But by the 50s, all set boxes were painted red like mine. And as the company grew, the area around the Gilbert factory became known as Erector Square. A.C. Gilbert died in 1961 and the company went in decline, filing for bankruptcy in 1967. The product was redesigned and they added many plastic parts, but that clunky looking models failed to compete with the new more realistic scale plastic models coming onto the market. The Gabriel Company of Lancaster, Pennsylvania bought the Erector name and continued to market the recently designed system. 
Sales were slow, and by the 1980s, the trademark Erector was acquired by Ideal Toys and then Tyco Toys. And Meccano of France has owned the Erector brand since the year 2000. In August 2015, the Erector brand name was relaunched under global name Meccano. Erector is believed by many to have been the subject of the first national advertising campaign in America for toys. Its great success made it part of the American folk culture, and the famous company slogan, Hello Boys, is still fondly remembered by many. Its popularity has faded in recent decades in the face of competition from molded plastic Lego-type construction toys, electronics, and other more modern toys and gadgets. Erector was inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame in Rochester, New York, and Erector sold millions of sets over the years. The most sought after by collectors is the 1931 number 10 set, although a larger set, the number 12, was manufactured for a brief time. The number 12 included the parts to make a parachute jump molded after the amusement ride at Coney Island. Touted in advertising of the day, the climax of the electric glory, the number 10 set weighed in around 25 pounds. Current Erector sets are actually Meccano sets manufactured by Meccano France and marketed in the United States under the Erector brand name. And an exclusive collection of the A.C. Gilbert Company's scientific and educational children toys is housed at the Eli Whitney Museum in Camden, Connecticut. In 2002, a movie based on A.C. Gilbert's life called The Man Who Saved Christmas was made for television. It focused on Gilbert's successful appeal to the Council of National Defense to reject a proposal to ban toy production in favor of wartime-related materials during World War I. And this is interesting. In 1949, an erector set was used to build the precursor to the modern artificial heart by doctors William Sewell and William Glenn of the Yale School of Medicine. The external pump was successfully bypassed the heart of a dog for more than an hour. And one of my favorite rides at Disneyland is called Soaring, and it was designed with an erector set. So there's some good history for you. Now let's see how this helicopter's coming on my end. Well, this is how I received the kit. It actually came with three motors. You know, I always liked that big AC motor with the transmission, and I'm going to build something with it pretty soon. The helicopter I'm going to build tonight runs on a small blue DC motor. The parts are all in good shape, and not a single part or screw was missing. The manuals I received didn't actually show the construction of the helicopter, so I had to improvise and build it from the picture on the lid. <laughs> and there were a lot of unknowns where I couldn't actually see how the motor was installed, so I did the best I could. In normal building, you look at the pictures and the part numbers and use your head to try to figure out the best way to build it. Sometimes the parts had to be removed in order to get it right, but that was the part that was fun, the engineering. Well, I've opened up the package of all the Erector Set parts as I'm cleaning it up here now. And I gotta tell you, when I was a kid, I really didn't realize all of the parts and what it must have taken to build these. Uh, because there's nothing plastic here. And all these parts, what a lot of drilling and stamping and bending and all these little intricate parts are just quite amazing to me. Uh, the way they fit together, for example, the girders, they have these uh, grooves on the side and they all fit together just perfectly so you can screw them together. Everything is with metal. Uh, quite an amazing set and uh, I think the machinist probably went nuts just, you know, putting all the uh, threading everything that you have to thread for the bolts and the screws and everything, you know. Quite an amazing set uh, for sure, the tools and so I'm cleaning it all up and let's get started here and see what we can get built.
never had a real, an old-fashioned railroad track. This is the way those wires used to hook up. Not bad. Is cool. Hmm, I think it'd probably fly better with one rotor blade. <laughs> 